What's up, DCS crew and the wet shaving community? <clears throat> it is episode eight here at hashtag darn close shave at the DCS HQ. So we're going to go ahead and take this uh, green today for St. Patty's Day. I'm using Pinard Clubman's homage from uh, Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements. This is Club Guy. Great scent. I'm using the matching aftershave as well. And the Peregrino is a green handle and cream. Uh, with a 24 millimeter synthetic knot, also from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, and the Rockwell 6S with the Plate 5 and a Gillette Nasset blade. Speaking of blades, the knife for the day is the Dark Olive Micarta Civivi Elementum Button Lock. Now, if you notice, this is kind of a different knife. It doesn't have a flipper tab and it doesn't have any uh, thumb studs. Now, the reason why is because this particular button right here releases the, the blade, which is running on bearings, and it just literally falls out so you can flick it open. It locks it in place. Then you go ahead and you flick it back in with the push of the button once you're done. It will not open unless this particular button is pushed so that you have to open it with the, uh, the button being used and then close it using the button as well. Great, great knife, whether you're left or right-handed carry, it is tapped for that and it has a deep carry clip. Awesome knife. And uh, enough said, let's go ahead and get uh, started with the shave. Go ahead and let the intro roll and we'll go ahead and talk about stuff that's EDC related, shave related, general tomfoolery and shenanigans. You know how we do it. If you don't, stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. So I went ahead and uh, I've already lathered up Club Guy from uh, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. I'm gonna call them PAA from now on. Uh, here is the brush. I do have some additional soap here just in case. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, um, figured, you know, just to set the mood, I'd tell you guys a little bit of a story that uh, was around St. Patrick's Day, if not on St. Patrick's Day. Um, <clears throat> this was, this is a story that involves uh, my dad. Now, if uh, you guys have seen my video on uh, Sterling Deep Blue Sea, you know that my dad and I were really close and we shared a lot of uh, interesting adventures and stories. I mentioned one that I won't get into here, but I will say that it has to do with oatmeal cookies and uh, the use of expletives, because uh, in my parents' house, the food had no name on it. So he was king of the jungle. He could choose to eat anything that he wanted. Um, around St. Patrick's Day, I want to say in the early 2000s, this was after I had graduated. I want to say it was maybe 2004, long before I had met Junie, my girl. Um, my dad and I went to go see a movie in an area in uh, Miami called Kendall. I used to live near there, actually, by Miami Dade College. And um, there was a movie theater in Kendall. And Miami people will know this if they lived in that area. It was called Kendall 9. It was next to a billiards place called Jillian's that closed many, many years ago, along with the theater. And across the street, which I believe is still open today, is a uh, Bahama Breeze. Well, what a lot of people won't remember at that time was the juice, AKA Orenthal James Simpson was living in Miami at the time and he was hanging out in Kendall, you know, quite a bit. And uh, so, make a long story short, I went to the movies with my dad. We got out of the movie. I, I don't remember which one it was. It was some. It was a shitty movie. I will remember that because we were talking about how shitty it was and we were laughing about it. So we went to the bathroom. When we were in the bathroom, you know, we both took a whiz. We're washing our hands, and lo and behold, the juice comes in. Straight up, it is OJ. So he walks in, and I tell my dad, "Hey, Dad, oh, it's the juice," and he heard me. As he was walking by. So he stopped and he looked at me because I was right in front of the mirror and my reflection, you know, I kind of looked at him and he looked at me and he goes, how you doing young man? And then my dad turned around and he goes, Juice, what's up brother? 
And he goes, oh, I'm doing pretty good, man. How you doing? Not too bad, not too bad, man. I, uh, it's fucked up what happened to your lady, bro. And he kind of gave this face when, you know, my dad said that. Because obviously my dad was talking about, you know, Nicole Brown Simpson. Which, if you've been living under a rock, was the subject of a very controversial uh, <laughs> case in court. You know, if the glove does not fit, you must acquit, that whole thing. So, um, OJ was obviously a bit uncomfortable. Kind of gave my dad a look. I gave my dad a look too, because I'm like, dude, what the hell are you doing, bro? Like, what are you trying to do? Bitch, are you trying to get us both killed? <laughs> so, my dad after that breaks the silence in dad fashion. And he goes, hey, man, yeah, it was between us men. Did you do it? Oh, my God. You could see the anger in OJ's face. But he saw that I was there. And he pulled kind of like a Bill Cosby type of thing. He wanted to get stern on my dad without losing his, his temper. And he knew he was already, you know, going to be under a microscope. So if he did anything stupid, he was going to go right back, you know, uh, to the, through the court system. You know, we were probably going to get paid, you know, because my dad would have probably acted like he got hurt or something. And he was going to end up on the news again. And, you know, he had already lost a lot of money. So he's like, hey, man, you know, that's, that's not the kind of thing you talk to people about, you know, after everything that just happened. You do realize that that was, you know, that was my lady. You know, and uh, my dad didn't go far because he was just fucking with him. Uh, you know, if you knew my dad, you re he, if he knew my dad, he would have realized he was just fucking with him. And uh, so, you know, the Jews took a whiz and he left. So I told my dad, Dad, what the, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Like, that was, you know, it was OJ, man. You could have said a million things. You could have talked about him in the Naked Gun or you could have talked about, you know, him during the football days. You know, a bunch of other shit, you know? He lives here in Kendall, you know? And I was thinking to myself, man, I'm fearing for my life because if OJ sees me again, he's not going to forget me. I was with my dad at that time. So my dad's like, man, fuck that guy. He probably did that shit. So, you know, afterwards we get out of the movie theater and he's like, you know what? I want to go get a drink. Let's go ahead and go uh, across the street. So I'm like, okay, cool. I think I was 21 or 22 at the time. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm not going to turn down a drink. We went to Bahama Breeze and... We sat at the bar. Forgot what I ordered, but my dad's usual was uh, whiskey. He'd either get, you know, a Chivas Regal on the rocks, or he'd get himself, you know, a little bit of Johnny Walker. I think that day he got, you know, some Johnny Walker Blue on the rocks. That's what it is. So he had his drink. We we're just talking about shit, and we were talking about, man, I can't believe, you know, ran into OJ at the theater. No sooner that we said that, did we see on the other side of the bar, OJ was there too. OJ was there too. And he was talking to the bartender, a white lady. <laughs> you know, a cute, uh, not a blonde, she was a brunette. Young lady, she had, you know, served us before and stuff. And uh, I had no sooner said, oh, I thought to myself, holy shit, the juice is there. When my dad, being my dad, <laughs> opened his mouth. And he goes, hey, OJ. OJ was startled, you know, because, I mean, this is 20 feet away. Some guy's like, you know, screaming at him. He goes, hey, OJ. And OJ looks up. And he locks eyes with my dad. And he sees it's my dad again. And <laughs> my dad screams out from the side of the freaking bar from literally like 20 feet away. He goes, so did you do the damn shit or what, man? <laughs> OJ got so pissed off. He called management and he's like, you guys got to get this guy the hell out of here. Him and his kid. I don't ever want to see him here again. This is ridiculous. I come here all the time and don't nobody treat me like this. Oh my God. My dad, turns out he was not cool with being disrespected by anyone, even the juice. 
So he was gonna he was gonna make him feel like shit however he felt he could. And so that day, Bahama Breeze uh banned my father and me uh from going again, at least for a long time. There was a change in management. And we went back. Only a, you know, it was a while later. But they escorted us out. They offered to pay for my dad's drinks and the appetizer that I had had. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was my that was my running with the juice. And uh, when I was with my old man, that was the story with my old man, and our first and last run-in with O.J. Simpson. And as soon as the door closed, we all looked at each other like that nigga did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one that I hadn't really thought of until recently. I had seen OJ on TV and, you know, I was looking through pictures of my old man and stuff. And I brought it up one day to my girl and I'm like, hey, you know, we got a story where we, uh, I actually met OJ Simpson. And she's like, really? And so I told her, she's like, oh my God, don't be telling anybody that. Of course, I'm going to tell people that. Are you kidding? That's my old man. So, yeah, there it is. Um, <clears throat> now, you're wondering why, probably, for the knife guys, why I went ahead and I paired up the Civivi Elementum button lock with the stuff. Number one, besides the fact it's green, um, you know, this club guy, okay, uh, has a golf ball on it. So it's golf oriented. Golf is typically played by people who use golf, uh, golf clubs. And the Elementum, shares a lot of characteristics that would be very um, beneficial to people who use gloves while sporting. And being that we're from the South, it's also a great knife to keep because um, the steel 14C28N is very corrosion resistant. In fact, there are companies that use 14C28N for stainless steel uh, kitchen knives, you know, high quality kitchen knives. Now, just high quality, well, um, they typically use it uh, for knives that are a stepping quality under uh, Japanese VG10 steel. VG10 is used by companies like Shun or Kai. And a lot of artisan companies because it takes a wicked freaking edge. And it's one of the best corrosion resisting steels that you can use for, you know, stuff. Like kitchen knives. Typically, you know, you'll have companies use high carbon steel in kitchen knives. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll tell you to patina them. Which is essentially to create a forced, uh, it looks like a discoloration on the uh, the knife. That's what a patina is. And it's a chemical reaction that basically forces the carbon steel to create a, a safety barrier of sorts on the knife and add corrosion resistance to it. It's kind of like to evolve the knife, which is cool as shit. I mean, you know, knife, uh, uh, steel stuff is awesome to, to you know, study about. Um, that's when it's a carbon steel, but when it's a stainless steel, uh, because of the amount of chromium and such that's in it, the corrosion resistance is much higher than carbon steel or high carbon steel, and you don't have to worry about patina. 14C28N is highly corrosion resistant. So you don't have to worry about it corroding in time, you know, rusting. And aside from that, it takes a really good edge. And it's easy to treat, you know, it's, it's relatively budget, uh, budget priced steel. And when I say budget priced steel, it's better than your low end steels that you'll find. Um, that knife that I showed you, 
cost is going to cost around the high 60s, early 70s dollars. I want to say shipped, depending on where you get it. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put a coming soon link down below from a company I know that's going to be selling it. And by the time it's coming out, which between us, I'm not really supposed to say it, but this is one of those times where, you know, nice people don't generally watch shave videos. So I'm going to tell you guys. It's, it's uh, I've been told by a little bird, who shall remain nameless, that it's going to be released in April. Probably late April. But what I can say, and you know, you can hear this on my video that I post on, and I'll go ahead and show a graphic on it right now, uh, is that there's going to be six versions of this when it first comes out. It's going to be two steels. It's going to be the, this one right here, which is... 14C28 N steel. The N standing for nitrogen, by the way. And then you have uh, Damascus steel. Now, um, there are Damascus blades, uh, straight razors and that sort of thing. Damascus steel is widely different and it's basically um, pressed steels against each other to where they create this pattern in layers. And the, the, the patterns can vary and so can the steels. Uh, in this case, they use a, uh, I forgot the exact composition, but it's a blend of 9CR steel and 10CR steel. And I wish I had the exact names, the full names, so I could tell you. But up until recently, it was pretty much proprietary. They weren't saying anything to anybody. They didn't want anybody to know what kind of Damascus steel they were using. But in any case, uh, those are a little bit more expensive because they are not only a different steel and it's a more uh, labor intensive process to create that than the stainless steel. But they are also coming with uh, shredded carbon fiber uh, and uh, there's, there's red shreds inside of the carbon fiber and blue shreds inside of the carbon fiber in one of the, the separate models. So they're going to have a blue uh, shredding carbon fiber version with Damascus and a red shred carbon fiber in Damascus. Those are going to be the most expensive as of the current plans. And the rest are going to be either in uh, G10 or uh, like this one is going to be like three variants in uh, Micarta. And they're all going to have the button lock. Okay. Now I've done reviews on two of them so far. I've done the S35VN uh, version, which is the upgraded version of the original. And then I did the original, which is in uh, semi-stainless tool steel. Uh, it's a D2, okay? And <clears throat> they're both really, really good. This one is slightly bigger than the others. And like I said, you know, um, while the Elementum comes with a flipper, this version, does not. It doesn't have a, any thumb studs. Doesn't have a flipper tab. Doesn't have anything. So it's exclusively opened by hitting the button. Look at that. That's so nice and fluffy. It's exclusively opened by actuating that button. And that's how you close it. In fact, you can't open it any other way. It will literally stay closed. Just work on my beard here a little bit. So, for that reason, you know, I wanted to check it out. Now, I was a little skeptical because, you know, when they come out with something like that, you know, it's not typically something that the company has been known to do. And people... In their, you know, defense, they were asking for a larger version of that blade. And it is larger. I, th I think the uh, the original element uh, Elementum is just under a three inch blade. I'm going to say it's two and 2.97. Something like that for, for legalities and for the size, it doesn't need to be that big. But this one is a three and a half inch blade. 
it feels thinner, honestly, uh, than when I was using the other uh, Elementums. But it slices just as good. Uh, and the steel is great too. You know, when you're in the knife world for a bit, And you see a lot of these, you know, non-US companies, and I'll say it like that. The steel choices tend to become a bit redundant. Everybody starts using, you know, stuff that's cheap and malleable, easy to use. And D2 is at the top of that list. Because it's a durable, like I said, it's a tool steel. It's been proven. And at the end of the day, honestly, it's cheap. And everybody can create their own variations of it. And stay within a certain price budget. See, Vivi is no exception. Companies like Kershaw use it. You know, even American companies like Medford Knives use that. They use a different version of it. Uh, Buck. Knives actually uses it too. They use a different version. I think it's a Boss Heat Treated uh, D2. That's their own proprietary treatment, by the way. And um, so everybody's like, man, fucking over using D2. Like, can you use something different? You know? So they're like, all right, well, you know, the problem with D2 is number one, everybody uses it. Number two, it's cheap. So anything we're going to use, we got to have something budget. Uh, or semi-budget for what we're going to use because we're going to use this on a different blade style and it's got to be cheap to buy and it's got to be well known for being a good budget blade it's got to at least outperform D2 one way or the other hence 14C28N and it's a good steal So I am done here with uh, this part of the shave. Let me go ahead and wash everything off and then we'll go into the post shave uh, and talk a little bit more about the knife. All right, so quick recap. Today's blade is the Civivi Elementum Button Lock in uh, Dark Olive Micarta. I used Club Guys Soap with the Peregrino uh, brush. I'm gonna be using the aftershave, which is really awesome. Uh, the Rockwell 6S with the uh, the Plate 5. And I told you a story about how I simultaneously got banned from Bahama Breeze and uh, met OJ Simpson uh, and uh, was there with my dad. It was just a tale with my dad. I have a bunch of tales like that. Um, and if you liked that particular tale, uh, let me know. I can go ahead and give you some more, uh, depending on if you're interested and hearing more about, <laughs> you know, funny situations like that. Uh, in fact, I have one that's very fond, uh, fond memory of when I used to work for uh, Federal Express. And um, <laughs> this guy who was a, uh, a courier there uh, once told me when he found out who my father was, that my father had once stolen his FedEx truck when he was making a delivery. So uh, he told me the story and then my father later told me and Kind of corroborated the stories together so uh that was pretty interesting so i can tell you about when my dad jacked a fedex truck uh kind of as a prank for this guy and uh we can go from there if you're interested but i'll leave that for you know another day so we're done here Get the witch hazel talk a little bit about the elementum so uh, if you're golfing or if you're in a situation where you're going to be using uh, gloves and you have issues, you know, uh, operating a thumb hole or a uh, thumb stud or even a flipper tab, it's great to have a button that you can just press on and with one hand just flick it open and it's ready to, you know, be put to work. When you hold it, it's actually uh, allowing your grip to be under the button so you can actually use it without any fear of it uh, prematurely opening or closing, uh, in, you know, in your hand. So that's always nice to know. And go ahead and air this down. 
so that I can go ahead and apply the aftershave. It's actually gotten a little bit warmer here where I'm at in the south. The cold is finally starting to go away. Uh, it's hit, I think, a high of like 72 today. It's been the warmest it's been probably all year. And uh, I'm gonna have to put the AC and the fan and stuff on because I like sleeping cold. Um, <clears throat> so that said, I have the uh, toner on and I'm gonna just be using the aftershave. If you notice, I haven't mentioned anything about using a balm. Um, in which case, you know, if I was going to use a balm, I'd use something like PAA Star Jelly. Really, really good stuff. It's not quite a balm and it's not quite an aftershave, but it does have alcohol in it. Really, really good stuff. It comes mentholated and um, some versions do not come mentholated. Like, for example, Et2 is out right now as a seasonal uh, fragrance. Um, as scent, front part of the line, they have the soap, like I have, the aftershave, and they have the Star Jelly amongst a bunch of other stuff. Now, the Star Jelly... Take this one for example this is the unscented version you're going to get one with uh brute scented which is called et 2 and it comes mentholated and non-mentholated so you can get either one in this particular case uh even just the standard one here it's very lightly mentholated but it is mentholated and it does have alcohol in it so keep that in mind if you ever choose to buy it now we're going to go ahead and go with my method of aftershave give it a little bit of time for the juices to kind of marinate in your hands. No burn, ladies and gentlemen. No burn whatsoever. Now, this isn't just your average $6, you know, uh, aftershave that you'd pick up at the supermarket. I mean, you know, it does cost a pretty penny, but you get some seriously good, it, they call it skin food. Uh, you know, aloe vera, you know, glycerin, you get a little bit of menthol, just a touch. You get a bunch of other stuff. You do get the alcohol. You do get, um, in some of them, you do get witch hazel. You get a bunch of other things that aren't necessarily meant to just dry up your skin after, you know, a shave. Alcohol is used to be able to go ahead and, you know, create some type of... Uh, protecting effect against any scrapes and cuts that you may experience, which in this case, I see no weepers, I don't see any cuts. And, you know, everything else is just really meant to uh, provide some skin relief and keep from getting any dryness or rash as a result of, you know, dragging a blade across, you know, down, uh, across against and with the grain of your skin in a very sensitive area, which is your face. So if you haven't already, I would strongly suggest that you check out uh, not only the aftershaves from Fetisin Ar Phoenix Arnison Accoutrements. I said like Fetisin. It's weird. Oh, Vibazin, um, P-A-A for short. And you can check that out at Fetis, uh, wow, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements or phoenixshaving.com. Um, great stuff. This, just to kind of give you that example um this is brute i love brute and this is as much as i've used it and i've used this quite a bit this is how much i've actually used <laughs> club guy i I'm, I'm close to like about a third i'm getting close to about a third of the bottle uh and this is part of the regular lineup but i will say that this is not so if you were going to get an aftershave get this and get the soap it's really good stuff guys that's it um not much more to say other than that, other than, um, you know, this was the knife, the uh, Civivi Elementum button lock, and uh, Club Guy pulled in clutch with the St. Patrick's Day Shave, along with the Peregrino from PAA with the 24 millimeter uh, synthetic knot. I'm usually a 26 millimeter guy. It's a little bit bigger, but uh, great knots, great synthetic knots that you can beat on. You have to worry of, you know, the badger smell and all that stuff that, that comes with having a non-synthetic knot. And um, yeah, guys, just a great all around shave. Good times talking about stuff. If uh, you have any questions, feel free to go ahead, hit me up. And uh, I'm always available if, uh, you'd want to leave a comment below or email me at dailycarrysolutions at gmail.com or my Instagram at dailycarrysolutions. So uh, whether you choose PAA, whether you choose Ariana and Evans, you know, I mean, it's your shave. You do it your way. I believe, 
I believe Chris from IMCDB actually says that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to I'm going to leave with my uh, slogan, which is uh, whether it's a Civivi, whether it's Wee Knife Company, uh, whether it's Kershaw, Shun, uh, or any other company that produces knives. Just remember, if you EDC, think of DCS. This is episode eight of hashtag Darn Close Shave here on Daily Care Solutions. I'm Carlos. You guys have been great. I'll see you next time. Take care.